What's up everybody? Welcome back to another day in Car Mechanic Simulator with me, the Virtual Mechanic, and today's project, which is our competition entry, our customised Emden Jaeger. Definitely looking forward to doing this one. We'll talk about it in a minute, but come and join us on Discord for the competition. If you're watching this video on the Wednesday it came out, this is the last day to enter your car for the competition. You have until 10pm UK time. GMT this evening to get it uploaded, but all the, everything will be up there for another 24 hours to get your votes in, to pick your favourite. I think I already know who's going to be the winner of this one, and it is an absolutely epic build. But head over to Discord, link in the description below, check out the competition. It is the official Red Dot Games Discord server where we run the competition. It's just a bit of fun, mostly, but we will have a couple of prizes coming very, very soon to a new competition. But let's get stuck into our Emden Jaeger this time. And uh, we've got a few little differences on this one and nothing too special. So let's jump in. It is obviously the VM edition. It's got 205,000 kilometers on it. And we got ours from the auction house and the frame is only at 1%. This car is almost ready for the scrapyard. No repairs needed because we can't fix that. But everything else, not too bad, especially the parts. They're only at 50%. And I'm always happy with that. We did get a good deal on this one. Um, I did maybe cheat the system just a little bit. And I added another part since the end of the last video. So it's even gone up a little bit more. I do apologize. So we're just going to sort of gloss all over that for a minute. And we'll just deal with it when we come to the end for the final sale value of the car. The engine in this one is the Lotus Elise K-Series i4 double overhead cam engine and it's a pretty epic one to go in this little beast i really like it looks pretty good in there it does also look relatively brand new um that's probably because we swapped it out after we'd bought the scrapped car but there we go these things happen sometimes we do also have a large intercooler somewhere in there let's just jump in it should be tucked in there at the front it is in there that's what we like to see there we go i did add that one in that was the very last piece i added in uh, after i'd finished recording a monday's video so this is what we're going to be working on today there are going to be a few bonus parts this they're not on there yet so we will come to them just a little bit later nothing special we also changed all the exhaust massively adjusted this ride height to bring it down and i think it's looking pretty epic in my opinion so let's get this little emden jaeger started let's get it over to the car wash let's get it cleaned up here we are then in the car wash let's get you cleaned you beastly little machine what color are you underneath this Kind of looks like a bit of multicolor. Or oh, are you... Wait, are you white and orange? You are kind of a white and orange, which is weirdly the livery we are going to be going for, my custom livery for this one today. So let's get the interior done. Get this beast back on the lifter. Get the engine ripped out and start getting everything else stripped down. That engine was looking pretty new, so I'm going to assume there is an oil pan. There definitely is. So let's just get all of that drained out. I wonder if it adds in clean or dirty oil. Somewhere in the middle, but not very much. Very, very little oil in there at all. So let's get in. Oh, I've just realized something very stupid. Let's get you back down. It's an I-4 engine, which means we need to get the starter out from the front before we do anything else. There we go. Let's just get you out of there nice and easy. Thank you very much. I reckon there's probably going to be something else, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's get back underneath and see what we've got going on in here. In we go. Now, it is front-wheel drive. I left it as front-wheel drive because I thought it was pretty good. So we are going to need to get these front wheels off and these drive axles out before we touch that gearbox. Okay, it is going to let us. I'm still going to do it anyway just to make it seem a bit more fitting. So I'll be back in just a second. There we go then. That's the front wheels and drive axles out. We also need to get this front drive shaft out of here. And then we should be able to unbolt this gearbox nice and easy. Now, you can see my bit of convoluted exhaust setup going on here. To get all of this to match in it's really hard because this engine is obviously meant to be a rear engine for the lotus so uh it's not designed to have a full exhaust going all the way through it so i had to sort of muck around with that one we will just take these front exhaust sections out of here just to make it so we definitely can lift that engine out of there hopefully that part doesn't need to come out as well but we shall see so let's get you back on the ground go and grab the beautiful little crane and get that lotus engine ripped out of this engine bay and we'll see at least Okay, that is it. That's what we like. Nice and easy. Get the crane put away. And let's see what we've got going on inside of this engine bay. Over on this side, we do have the power steering reservoir, wishy-washy reservoir, and the coolant reservoir all tucked in a nice little corner at the front. With the brake servo just chicken there. Chilling there. Chicken there. Just chilling there at the front. Then we've got an ECU Type A stuff just down there. Our little fuse box mounted on the side wall looking very nice. We've got the ABS pumper module up here with a cheeky battery just tacked down 
on a little shelf just down there looking pretty good. We'll grab you out because we've got to put you on charge anyway. And then down the back, we've got the fuel tank and fuel pump. All the suspensions looking pretty complete down the back. Can I get back up the front, please? Thank you very much. And uh, I've taken the wheels off, so I'm going to say all the suspension's pretty there at the front as well. That's definitely what we like. But now we need to drain some liquids. You all know the drill by now. Right click, additional tools, drain tool, click and hold on the container, and it'll all drain out. It's nice and easy. I'm going to get the rest of this stripped down, get it all repaired, ready to go back together. Then we'll come back and sort out the bodywork and the bonus parts for this beautiful Emden Jaeger. That's everything repaired, replaced, or upgraded, ready to go back on the beautiful little Emden Jaeger. So let's just start stripping all of this down. Out you come. Out you come with the fenders, the hood, the lovely front bumper. We've gone for the alternative front bumper today, along with the alternative headlights as well. So out you come there. Out with the windshield and doors. Then we've got the body window. Nearly called it a bay window again, just in there. No rear bumper on at the moment. One tail light, no rear window or nothing. Out with the body window again. And that should be everything for the bodywork. So let's get in and grab this interior out with that front seat, out with the rear bench. And we are missing the steering wheel, but that's no worries at all. Is that everything off of it? That's definitely the right screen, but not what I meant to click on. But there we go. Nothing else showing on there. And it does show 1% on there. Absolutely fantastic. The frame is at 1% and we obviously bought the car for just under 11,500. So what are we saying? Not a lot. I'm going to go... I'm going to go straight up 500. 1,000. Okay. I thought it was going to be a lot less than that, but there we go. Let's just jump in and have a quick look at the Emden Jaeger body shop. There's all your base standard parts. Everything is just what it is in there. But you do have a couple of alternative body parts for the Emden Jaeger. Alternative headlights, alternative brake lights, front bumper, rear bumper, and hood. The only thing I'm not using on ours today from the alternative section is I'm not using the alternative hood. I quite like the stock hood in comparison. So there we go. I'm going to pin it all back together exactly as it came apart because I have already designed this one. So I'm going to get that sorted and I'll be back in a second. Scrapped off all the unrepairable body parts, but now we can get this beautiful little beast all back together. Obviously, let's just get on with it. On with the hood. That is just the stock hood along with the stock fenders on there looking very good. The alternative front bumper, front bumper B, along with the B headlights as well. In we go and in we go. Stock windshield, stock doors, because that's all you can do with it. Windows are stock, mirrors are stock. A lot of this is pretty stock, let's be honest. Let's get going around. The trunk is stock as well. Emden Jaeger looking good on there. Then we've got the trunk window. Tail lights are the alternate B tail lights, looking very nice. And the bumper at the back is also the alternate B bumper, looking good on there. Bay window, bay window, body window, in you go there. Front door, on you go. Window, in you go. And mirror, in you go. That should be everything for the body apart from the plates. And we'll come back to them in just a moment. I've pressed the wrong button. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to go in there. I want to pit the interior in. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, we kept the bench as just the Emden Jaeger bench in there. I did swap the front seats, but kept the same style. We took them from the fabric to the leather, just because I like how the leather paints a little bit better. We did keep the steering wheel as it was. Look Looking very nice in there. Liking that. Then let's get the plates on. In we go. For our plates, we've gone up for our VM plates with Jaeger Bomb. Had to slightly abbreviate Jaeger, but it just made me laugh when I thought of it. So that's what I decided to go with. In we go there. Looking very nice. Now, we are going to throw on some of the bonus parts. I'm not going to throw them all on now, but we will talk about them while we are here. Because we have got a couple just one or two or, you know, nine just on the roof there. These are the shark antenna bees and they're not meant to be shark antennas. They're meant to look like a bit of a roof uh, diffuser, you know, in regards, instead of having a spoiler, might have a little bit of a roof diffuser. Now, these are all going to be black when we eventually get into the paint shop. I just wanted to show them all on there. Little bits of shark fins just sticking up the top, looking quite nice. If we go onto the front open up this uh, then go back that's not the right mode back into the uh, bonus parts mode there we go these two bits here are a metal plates that's just because the air filter is going to sit on them rather than be floating and the last piece in there i'm not going to put it in now but i'll just show you what it is it is the air tube absolutely fantastic we're not going to throw that one in until we've got the engine and the air filter in to connect it all up those parts are very cool. The uh, air tube is by Dave Brown. We will have a link in the description below to that. The antenna set is by Jackal. You get more than just them shark fins. You get two shark fins and then loads of, oh, just hit my microphone, normal aerial styles. And then the metal plates are by 8-Bit Jake. As I said, link in the description below to all of them. But have we got everything 
apart from that air tube, obviously. But that doesn't count for the numbers. Body, frame, interior, all at 100%. That's what we like. Let's get this beast into the paint shop and decide what we're going to do with my beautiful livery today. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Well, there she is, the Emden Jaeger bomb, looking absolutely fantastic in that livery. I love it. What do you think of my livery? We've gone for this weird patterned stripe. Just something crazy weird that I came up with. Off center going front to back on there. And then we've got a bit of white going all the way around the outside. Kind of like we did on the Cyclone truck. Just a little bit different. And I did have to do all this one myself. I couldn't just copy it from somebody else. So uh, it wasn't quite as easy as it was with the truck. Thank you, French, French Toast. But there we go. What do you think of the orange and white on this one? Lovely deep matte orange on there looking very nice we've also put some color on the seats i did try the alcantara material on there it looks all right just a tiny little bit weird in this particular build mostly because of the bench the front seats this bit stayed normal and the rest of it went alcantara and it looked absolutely fantastic but for the rear bench the whole thing was in it and it was just a little bit too much so we went back to the normal mode on it but we will try it again another time just this is for a competition build and i want it to be as best as I can possibly make it because, you know, I'm competitive and I like to win. So let's just crack on. We do have everything painted. We've also got the shark fins at the top there in a little black looking like a diffuser, looking very nice. And we go up to the front. The plates are in the matte orange, fitting in quite well with that engine bay. And then we'll get everything else in there later. It should look really, really good. We are going to keep some blacks in this one. I proved that I can do a whole engine or a whole build without using any black at all. So now I can pick and choose the little bits of black I want for my own personal taste. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have a play around with a few things, see how we can get that beautiful Lotus engine and obviously all of that suspension in there. So now I need to get everything painted and start reassembling at this beautiful Emden Jaeger. That's everything painted, ready to go back on the Emden Jaeger bomb. So let's just crack on with it. In our shocks, we've got white shocks, orange springs and white caps. Looking very good on there, very pleased with them. Off you come and let's start getting some of this in then. We're going to start with a large intercooler at the front in a lovely white just because we can. And then we're going to get the front suspension cross member. That is in a matte black looking good in there. And you know the drill by now. I'm going to get half of all the suspension in, show you a few little clips of things going in, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Just putting on the last brake caliper now, looking good in the orange. The back's a bit different to the front, but we've got all the connecting arms in an orange down the back. White, orange, white on the shock, looking very good with the white actual shock. I meant on the spring stuff. There we go. Black cross member, black knuckle. Uh, then we've got a white knuckle cover with the orange wheel hub, wherever it is. Orange brake caliper and a little white hub cap in there with one more side arm in white looking very good at the front. We've got black into black, same as we did at the back, but we've got white in the central. Obviously, white, orange, white still on that shock. Orange, white, orange there for the uh, lovely inner and outer tie rod with the steering rack. Orange brake caliper, obviously, and an orange wheel hub. Everything else is very similar. We do also have an orange front drive shaft in there as well. I'm very pleased with that. I think it's looking fantastic. Just one more piece to go in before we move on and get the engine bay all sorted. That is a fuel tank. That is an orange. It's not a force color. I've just used an orange on top of it and made it a lot brighter to match it in with the rest of these oranges. And then we've got a cheeky little white fuel pump in there as well. There we go. That's what I'm going to get done for the moment. I'm going to crack on and get the rest of the suspension all finished on that half. And then we'll move on to that lovely engine bay before going to build that beautiful Lotus i4 engine. There's the suspension all finished in orange, black and white. Looking pretty good. What do you guys think? Do let me know in the comments below. Would you have changed anything about this? Love to hear what your guys' thoughts are. But let's move on. We've got to sort this engine bay out. Let's just get all of these boring parts in the reservoirs. The bits that can't be painted. The battery. I mean, they can be painted, but I really don't see the point myself. The brake servo. And also the Stage 3 Type A ECU in there as well. We've already got the fuse box in, looking a pretty good. The air filter we've gone for today, we've just done it in a cheeky little white. Same as all the other whites. In you go. Looking very, very good. Get you all bolted up and in. Then if we go on to the ABS pump, we've got that in a very nice white. With the module on top, just in an orange. Just sort of separating it up. Looking pretty good on there. Then the radiator, we've just kept that one in a black, but the fan housing kit's in a white with the fan 
in their normal orange, no false chrome needed anymore. And I am very, very happy about that, if I am being truly honest. Now, let's go. Oh, before we do that, just want to show you the shocks popping through the top in the white as well. We're looking pretty good. Now let's go and build the beautiful Lotus engine. Let's get it on the stand. I took it off just so that I could not show it. But there we go. We've got the oil pan in white, the main block in black, and that engine head in a beautiful orange on there. Looking very nice. If we just zoom in a little bit, we'll throw some bits in. We've got the two camshafts looking nice in there. And then we can get the camshaft bearing or camshaft with bearing on top. But you do also have four spark plugs. There are lots of bolts in this one. So I'm just going to crack on and get it done. That's that all in. We did do the camshaft bearing part in black just to separate it a little bit from that orange. And we'll get to the head cover in just a moment. But before we do that, we'll just throw the water pump in. Not painted that one because it is going to be covered up. The back covers are in that lovely matte orange looking fantastic. On with the two cam gears and then a lovely little belt. On you go with one idle roller, That the one that's not painted. Make sure you get that one right in there. Bolt it up. Then the covers on the front are in that lovely matte white, looking very good. And they are separated by that tiny little bit of black in the middle there, looking pretty nice. So we've done the crankshaft pulley in a black as well to sort of go with that. But then we did the power steering pump in a white, along with the alternator also in a white on there, looking good. On with the belt, we just kept that one in a matte black. But the idle roller is in just an orange on the front there, just to add a bit more colour. We've got the oil filter in a lovely orange as well. And if we nip around here... The fuel filter is also in that orange. Now let's get the engine head cover on. That's in a white. Looking very good. Get you all bolted up and ready to go. In we go. Just a couple more bolts. Slightly longer ones. There we go. Then we've got the ignition wires. They're in a lovely orange. Then we've also got the ignition coil, which is also in that orange on the side there. And then we've got the ignition wire cover which I have done in an orange just to separate it up a little bit. And that's the bit that says Lotus Elise on it. I did try to get that in uh, in a different color, the, the wording, but I couldn't get it. So unfortunately, that's just one of them pieces. So then we got the exhaust manifold in a beautiful white on there, looking very nice. And yes, the rest of the exhaust will also be in a right white. The front exhaust section also in white on there. And then we've got the intake manifold in another white. On we go. All matched in with that lovely matte white. Then if we just nip inside, we've got the fuel rail, which we did in an orange. And that throttle, which is also in an orange on there as well. And there we go. That is the beautiful i4 K-Series Lotus Elise engine all finished. Let's get it dropped into our Emden Jaeger. See how good it looks inside that engine bay. In we go. Get you dropped in. Get that crane put away. That's looking pretty good in there. I love how it all matches now. It, I'm so happy with the updates to the quality of life mod. I cannot wait for it to come out fully and there'll be no more bugs because there are a couple of bugs, but we're working through them slowly, but surely looking good in there. We will get the extra bonus body part while we're here, which is that lovely airbox tube in there. We haven't painted that. I don't know why these have gone white, but they have, and I love it. I think it looks fantastic. So there we go. Let's get underneath. Let's go into normal mode. Let's get underneath and get a few more bits in. We are going to have to put it back down to put the starter back in. I have remembered it. I'm not, not forgetting it. But there we go. In with the gearbox. We've done that one. It looks like it's orange, but it's not. I've used the a new bit that's been added in the last video. I said it'd be nice if you could get the red, the plastic red, into a white. So we've used the white. And the reason it still shows up as orange is just because that little plate there is orange. And I absolutely loved it. So we left it like that. Looking fantastic on there. Very pleased with that. Then we've got all of the exhaust. We all know this is going to be white all the way through. So let's just get it all in and ready to go. I think that's pretty much it. Apart from that starter, which we do need to go and add in. So let's just get all of them in and then take a look at this. It does clip through just a little bit there. On, I really, really tried to get it so that it didn't, but there was nothing I could do about it. So then we get it running all the way through and out the back. Looking very nice there. Back down you go, you beautiful little car. And let's get in and get that starter in. I really am pleased with this one. I think it looks very, very nice. In with the starter, which we've done in that matte orange. Matching in with everything else in there. Looking absolutely fantastic. There we go. I'm going to get the liquids topped up. These beautiful windows tinted. Get some wonderful wheels done. And get this beautiful Emden Jaeger outside in the sun.
Well, here she is then, the Emden Jaeger Bomber, looking absolutely fantastic in orange and white, in my opinion. I really do love this one. I think it looks absolutely great. We've had a few issues today, but uh, we're getting through it, and it's looking fantastic. There's a few bits of the bonus parts. You can see the two plates in there holding up that wonderful air intake, just because I didn't want it floating. And the bonus part pipe, which now no longer has the white bits on it, but never mind. That just is what it is. We can get by with that. It's not too much of an issue. And then if we nip down to the back, we've got all of these little shark fins being like a diffuser instead of a spoiler. Absolutely fantastic. Loving all the bonus parts. Links to the correct people in the description below. If you want to go and grab those bonus parts, you can. And I will probably be releasing this config and delivery onto the workshop if you guys want to see it and have a play with it. So do let me know in the comments below if you do want to see them. But let's talk about these rims. These are the 21A. At the front here, it's a 17-inch rim, 285 width, this being a front-wheel drive car, with a 20 profile on there, and we've gone with it slicks. And uh, we are going to be going on the racetrack today. I realise we haven't discussed where we're taking this one. I want to try this little beast out on the racetrack. I think it could be a little bit of fun. Down at the back here, it is still a 17-inch rim, but it's only 225 width because we don't need all the power down at the back there. And it's a 30 profile. Looking very, very nice on there. Just tucked into the wheel arches a little bit. Looking brilliant. We jump inside. We can see, obviously, we've got all the colour on the interior there. Looking very good. No colour on the steering wheel today just because it fits in with the dashboard. Looking very nice on there. But let's get her started and listen to that little i4 Lotus engine. No turbos on this one, but that tick over is not too bad. Some gas. Oh, I like that. That's sounding a bit mean, isn't it? I think that's going to sound nice around the racetrack. There we go. Pleased with that little beast from the Lotus engine. So let's get this one onto the dyno. See what its horsepower is and what its drag rating will be. Well, here she is then on the dyno with our Lotus powered Emden Jaeger, the VM edition, or the Emden Jaeger bomb as we've been calling it. 208 horsepower from that K-Series engine from Factory. How much did we add today with our performance parts? If it ever gets there, there we go. A gain of 194 horsepower. Almost a whole new Lotus engine on there, but not quite. 93% is not bad, though. Bring this up to 401 horsepower, which isn't too bad. And a drag rating of A, 548. But at least we are in the top class. But we're not going over to the drag strip today. We are going to take on the racetrack. This is what I kind of built this one for. Uh, hopefully, we're going to beat that Henata Moon. Fingers crossed. So let's get in and have a look at the gearbox tuning I've gone for. It is a three ratio with 84 kilometers an hour in first gear, up to 348 in top gear. And I'll be honest, I haven't really adjusted these that much. I've only really played with the final ratio on there. And it's quite a good tune for the racetrack, at least. Probably not the best one for the drag strip. You can find your own one for there. Maybe we'll come back to this one another time and try that one out. We do have the fully tuned Stage 3 ECU ready to go. Don't forget, I've got a short to show you how to perfectly tune this every time. So you might want to go check that out. Little link up here, but there's also a link in the description below for you to go and check that one out. Obviously, no carburettors. So let's get onto the racetrack and see if we can beat the Henata Moon with its flying lap of a 126.537. Well, we're on the track with the Emden Jaeger bomb of ready to tear it up. I apologize about that name. I just find it funny. But there we go. The goal. We want to try and beat that Hinata Moon. Knock it off the racetrack lap time speederboard. Well, knock it off the top spot of the racetrack lap time speederboard anyway. We need to beat the standing lap of a 131.421 a flying lap of 126.537 we are quite low on power we've only got 401 horsepower from this beastie little machine but i'm thinking we might be able to do it it's front wheel drive it's going to slide around the corners nice and easy or glide around the corners nice and easily so we might be able to do it so let's get into it we're not going to see the first lap not most of it anyway if i make some mistakes or anything's overly special i will let you see it but then we'll follow on and see the whole of the flying lap and see if we can beat that hanata moon so let's get going with the emden jaeger bomb Come on, little Emden, you can do this. Let's go. We're off the line. We're in coming up towards the first corner. We're not going to change a break or anything. Did let a bit off the gas there, but let's get into corner number two. And then just a little bit more aching for the final corner. As we come onto the final straight and get across the line. That was incredibly quick. That might have even beat it already. 126.539. I haven't got time to go and look. Third gear. We definitely need that one there. There we go. 
little bit we can get around that fully flat as we come into the straightaway heading in to the first big corner the big left corner anyway we're gonna want to slam on the brakes and definitely want to be in third gear so let's get into that one that should be enough bit more off the acceleration there it wasn't quite enough braking as we come into the second part i do want to be in third gear again for that corner definitely comes better but can we keep it flat through here yes yes we can like in that one as we come in to the big right hander probably want to be third gear again so let's get down into there with a bit of braking let the car pull us around that was a little bit wide definitely not as good as the first lap but we still made it and it's pretty good nonetheless let's keep powering on we want to be in third again a little bit of braking drop it down into third gear and let the car pull us around that nearly didn't go wrong didn't go wrong that nearly went wrong didn't go right Onto the straightaway, much power as we can get. Let's keep that trigger all the way down as we go around the first part of the corner, then slamming on the brakes, dropping it into third. Letting the car pull us round. Oh, that was a little bit twitchy there. Let the car pull us back round. Final corner. Are we going to beat the Hinata Moon? I certainly hope so. Under six seconds. Come on. That is definitely it. That is what we like to see. I am incredibly happy with that one there as we crash into the tire wall at the very end. So we managed to do the standing lap in a 126.539, not quite beating the flying lap of the Hanata Moon, but definitely beating its standing lap. And then we got the flying lap in a 123.657, 100%, knocking the Hanata Moon off the top spot. After all of these attempts, I finally managed to do it. I'm so happy. So let's get this one back. Make sure we get it on the racetrack lap time board. And then we'll see if we could sell this little Emden Jaeger on for a little bit of profit. Although I'm definitely not going to. I'll be keeping this one. I've already got the space opened up. Ready for this one to go into. Finally, after what feels like forever. I know it's not been, but it's felt like it. I've been trying to knock that in Heart of Moon off the top spot for so long. And we end up doing it with a front wheel drive car. It's only got 401 horsepower. Absolutely incredible. I reckon that's more down to my driving skills slightly improving over the course of me trying to do this all these times but there we go we managed to get a standing lap in 126.657 and the flying lap in 123.539 from the little emden jaeger and that is a photo of me doing some donuts in celebration of finally actually finally beating it at Hanata Moon that has been there for ages. I mean, well done to Old Time. He built a fantastic car there. It races absolutely brilliant. We finally, finally managed to beat it. There we go. Let's get back outside and see what we could sell the Emden Jaeger for. There it is then, the Lotus-powered Emden Jaeger finally knocking that Hanata Moon off the top spot of the racetrack lap times board. Do still need a better name for that. But let's talk some facts and figures. I bought the car for 11000 433 and after my sort of mistake we could have sold it for 12,678 profit right at the very beginning but we obviously didn't do that i've since spent another 51,893 upgrading tuning and modifying the emden jaeger bomb as we've been calling it absolutely fantastic would we be able to make some profit if we were going to sell this one well our total spend is 63,326 well, there it is, all 100% completed, absolutely fantastic. That engine almost doubled in power, but not quite. 208 to 401 horsepower, an increase of 93%, which I'm definitely quite pleased of from that little K-Series engine. But we spent 63,326 in total doing it. I'm pretty confident we'll be able to make some money, but let's have a look. With a sale of 108,780, just, just a little bit of profit, 45,000. 454 is the profit from our Emden Jaeger, but we're not selling it. I've got a lovely open spot just there for this car to go in. I always do like to keep my competition builds. These two are competition builds sat right there. That one got added into the game, so you can play that one if you want to. And I think we are going to upload this to the workshop if you guys want to see it. So make sure you leave me a comment saying you want this on the workshop livery and car and I will get it uploaded. If you don't, I probably won't because there isn't a need for it because nobody wants it. But there we go. That's us finished with the Emden Jaeger and our competition entry. So again, don't forget to join us on Discord. New competition will obviously be starting on the Friday. This competition closes today. If you're watching it when it comes out, you've only got a couple of hours till 10 o'clock this evening, UK time, GMT, to get your uploads in. And then we'll have another 24 hours so you can vote for whichever one is your favourite. And if you want to vote for mine, Please, please do. But what have we got coming up on Friday? This is another law car. 
I don't know why, I'm just into a bit of the law cars at the moment, but this one is the Chieftain at TBX SCC. I don't, the supercharged car? I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure, but it is definitely a bit of a drag build. If I just hover over that rear wheel, it is absolutely massive. We can't quite see the front wheel on it, um, but it is like your normal sized front wheel. In fact, if we go into here, it should say the difference... There's not that much difference, but the, yeah, it's a much bigger wheel at the back anyway. Just trust me on that one. It looks like a bit of a drag build, so we will be taking this one down the drag strip. We got this from the auction house. It's in pretty good condition, in all honesty, compared to some of the things we've recently seen. But did we get a good deal? No, we're back to normal. There we go. 30,809 is what I paid for this one, and I could sell it for 25,656, losing out on 5,153 before we even start. Hopefully this one will be a drag strip beast and we'll be able to uh, win that one back just in drag strip winnings alone. The engine in this one is the V8 2 carb overhead valve, a supercharged engine. That's why I said supercharged car is what the SCC stands for, but I don't know. I've just made that up on the spot. This one's got 545 factory horsepower and should hopefully be pretty epic by the time we finish tuning it and making it look pretty awesome. So make sure you join us back here on Friday for another Car Mechanic Simulator video with this beautiful Chieftain TBX. What did you think of today's fantastic build, the Emden Jaeger for the competition? Don't forget to join us on Discord. Links in the description below and all that jazz. Leave a like if you enjoyed this one. Leave me comments. Let me know what you think of today's build. What you think we should try and do with that Chieftain TBX. And uh, any suggestions you might have from the future, I'm always, always happy to hear from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed. And if you want to share this video, video with anybody you feel free more the merrier is what i always say thank you so much for watching have a beautiful day whatever it is you're getting up to and as always i'll see you in the next one goodbye